Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make some mushroom and chestnut tartlets with uh, puff pastry and then the mushroom and chestnut filling with some parmesan cheese, balsamic vinegar um, and some shallots and should be very very tasty. Uh, this is a, a recipe which I saw in a Costco Connections magazine. Um, I've adjusted it slightly using slightly less parmesan, which I thought was too much. Um, but uh, basically it's pretty much the same. And so um, I'll go on to the ingredients. And for this I have uh, one sheet, which is 320 grams of uh, ready-made puff pastry. And this is... Uh, rolled up into a sheet which I will unroll. So I'm going to put that back into the fridge for the time being. Um, it needs to come out 10 minutes before I need it basically. And then for the filling I have uh, f 5 millilitres which is a teaspoon or thereabouts of olive oil. I have one clove of garlic which I have chopped up quite finely. 250 grams, 9 ounces, of mushrooms, which I've sliced and, and cut quite small. Some may be a bit too big, but I think they'll shrink down as they cook, so that would be fine. And then in these two uh, dishes, I have a total of 125 grams, 4.5 ounces, of whole cooked chestnuts. Uh, in this dish, I have three chestnuts which I have sliced. That's just to put on the top once the tarts, tartlets are baked. And the remainder of the 125 grams I have chopped quite roughly. Then I have a, one and a half teaspoons, 7.5 millilitres of balsamic vinegar. I have um, about a tablespoon and a half of rosemary which I have uh, chopped quite small and I have one uh, shallot again which I have chopped quite finely. How much shallot you use is up to you but this was a decent sized one and then I just have a pinch of salt and a little bit of pepper uh, in a container just for some seasoning which I can adjust if I need more later and then in this dish I have 30 grams which is about three quarters of a cup to one cup of parmesan cheese which I have grated so it, it's three quarters of a cup to one cup once it's been grated um, and that's all the ingredients so the first thing we need to do is to cook the mixture uh, which will exclude the parmesan and it will exclude the rosemary but it will use and uh, those three sliced chestnuts but it will use these other ingredients. So I've put a, a little drop of oil into my pan and into that I'm going to put my shallots and my chopped garlic and I'm just going to put those onto a fairly gentle heat and let them sweat down until they've softened. So I'll just sweat these down until they have softened a little bit. So then uh, that's softened a little bit so I'm going to add in my roughly chopped chestnuts and my mushrooms. And I'm going to cook these um, down for five or six minutes until the mushrooms have released their liquid um, which they always do when they're being cooked and that liquid has then evaporated in the pan so that I have a fairly dry mixture and at this point I'm going to add in uh, my salt and pepper to season it I will taste it later and I can add more if I need it As you can see, 
little drops of liquid are being released from the mushrooms and I'm going to keep cooking until uh, there are no drops coming out of the mushrooms and so my liquid has just about evaporated now as you can see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in my balsamic vinegar and I'm going to mix that around and I'm going to cook it for about a minute that's to get the the flavour of the balsamic vinegar, cook, vinegar cooked through into the mixture and absorbed into the mixture and then it will start to dry out that little bit again so I've cooked that for another minute and I'm now going to uh, take that off the heat and I'm going to put it into a bowl and allow it to cool down and as it cools down I'm going to preheat my oven to 200 degrees Celsius that's 180 Celsius with a fan, 400 Fahrenheit and I've lined a baking tray with some parchment paper ready to take my tartlets and as the oven comes to temperature I will take my pastry out of the fridge and leave it for the 10 minutes before we actually use it then I'll come back when uh, the filling has cooled down and the pastry is ready to be used so my oven is preheated now and um, I've rolled out, uh, rolled out I've unrolled my sheet of uh, puff pastry and I have here uh, a cookie cutter which is actually three and a quarter inches 83 millimeters or 8.3 centimeters uh, three inches would be fine but I, I think I can get eight of this size out of the pastry so I'm just going to cut those out I can actually get more than that but the recipe I'm using said eight so there should be enough filling for eight and what we're going to do is we're going to fill the center of each of these and then with a sharp knife like this we're going to score a line like that around the edge leaving a, a gap of about one centimeter around the edge so I'm going to take some filling and just for ease I'm going to um, put a, um, a little ring I'm not going to press down but I'm going to put the ring on so that I can put this mixture in like that and hope that it will stay in place when I lift that off like that and I'll do the same with the, the remainder and what I've been doing is I've been taking my knife while the ring is still on and just running the knife around the edge of the ring like that just to score that pastry that's to la allow the outside to rise as it bakes so then I need to put those onto a baking sheet now I could if these don't come off easily what I can do is simply uh, cut the um, the paper that they're on and transfer it to the baking tray on the paper just 
just like that and do the same with the remainder and I've put those on the baking tray so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those into my oven and I'm going to bake them for 15 minutes and then after 15 minutes I'm going to take them out of the oven to put the uh, chopped rosemary and the parmesan on but I'll come back and show you that when these have baked for 15 minutes. So I have now baked my tarts for 15 minutes and as you can see the pastry has risen up the sides quite nicely. So what I've done is I have mixed my uh, chopped rosemary into my grated parmesan. That's just for ease of distribution really. And then I'm going to just take some of the parmesan and rosemary and put it onto the top of the tartlets. And this is why I reduced the amount of parmesan because I don't think I needed as much as the original recipe said. This will melt down of course so I'm going to pile some more on the top once I've been round once. And with that distributed like that I'm going to put that back into the oven and I'm going to bake it for a further five minutes. Then after five minutes I'll take it out of the oven and uh, transfer the tray onto a wire rack and leave it to cool for a few minutes. Then I'll transfer the tartlets off the tray and onto the rack and uh, I'll come back and show you the results. Well I baked the um, mushroom and chestnut tartlets for a, an additional five minutes so that some of the parmesan could melt onto the top and uh, other bits just sort of stay nice and crispy on the top. So this is what they look like now and they baked up quite well I think. Um, and as I said some of the parmesan has melted into it and uh, the remainder just lays on the top slightly crispy. Um, that actually might not be quite the case if you were to grate the parmesan immediately before you put it onto the top. Mine's been sitting out for a couple of hours so maybe it dried out just that little bit but I'll have a taste of one. I, um, oh, it's very delicate but I'll try to show you the bottom so you can see that it's baked all the way through. So I'll just have a taste of this and it's still hot this one. That is very, very good indeed. I'm very surprised. The balsamic vinegar, just that little teaspoon and a half of balsamic vinegar, really uh, sets off the mushrooms and the chestnuts very, very well indeed. And I get the little hit of parmesan and I can taste the rosemary as well. It's very, very good. The pastry is nicely cooked. It's best if you can get all butter puff pastry, but any puff pastry will work just fine. Um, so I think these are perfect as we lead up to the Christmas and the holiday season for those people who are entertaining, uh, maybe have a buffet or something. Um, then you can serve some of these and people will enjoy them very much indeed. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe uh, in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.